With both the Biden and Trump campaigns hoping for big fundraising hauls as we're, what, 222 days away from the general election, here to explain what the numbers look like in context is CNN senior data reporter Harry Enten. Harry, how you doing? What are the numbers showing you? Far too much traffic in New York tonight. That's how I'm doing. But, <laughs> but uh, You would say that. That's your concern. That, I know. And that's I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm out looking out for number one and looking out for my fellow New Yorkers, although the smart ones are taking the subway. All right, this is some context for you on where we are in the cash race, right? Joe Biden well ahead of Donald Trump in terms of cash on ha hand at the end of last month. But in terms of money raised, right, Joe Biden's fundraiser tonight, $25 million. Trump, for the entire month of February, only raised $20 million. That's how big that $25 million is. It's a large chunk of change, a historic chunk, as the Biden campaign was hinting at. And again, a little bit more context. How much would Trump need to sell to reach $25 million? You know, he's selling those Bibles, those God bless the USA Bibles. He would need to sell more than 400,000 of those to reach $25 million. And he would, and those, remember those Trump never surrender sneakers, he would have to sell approximately 62,657 of them. So that's why he's looking forward to that big fundraiser next month. Because simply put, this type of stuff, this gimmicky stuff, ain't going to get him there, Laura. I got to tell you, that kind of reminds me of the old school Tootsie Pop and the owl, how many looks to consider the Tootsie Pop thing. <laughs> that, I don't know, we're, we're both older. Okay, fine. Anyway, Harry, can you put into context how much the top tickets are going for at this fundraiser? Because... Sounds like a lot of money. Yeah, it's going, it is going for a lot. So the top tickets at the fundraiser, the highest tickets for the fundraiser, $500,000. Put this into some context, all right? The top Taylor Swift errors ticket, that often went for about $20,000. How about a Super Bowl top suite seat, $125,000. Far less than that, $500,000 for the hottest seat at the Biden fundraiser. In fact, the only thing I could really find that would match it or exceed it is a trip to space on Virgin, $600,000. That would be the only thing that to exceed it. But of course, Laura, what we were talking about, Trump wants to get in on the action. So Trump has his own big fundraiser heading into August where he may, in fact, outraise Biden's big bash. He's hoping to raise $33 million. My goodness gracious. And how much for the top ticket? At this point, it's looking like $814,600. So the fact is, Biden is doing a lot tonight, but Trump may do a lot come April, Laura. Well, wow, that puts into context that this is a lot of money being spent. Oh, yeah. Harry Enten, oh, my goodness. <sighs> we'll come back to you. Thank you so much. to we'll talk about all this with Will Jawando, a former White House official under President Obama and a council member in Montgomery County, Maryland. Also, Lee Carter, a pollster and president and partner at Mislansky & Partners. And Matt Mowers, a former Trump administration official and president of Valcor Global Public Strategy. Good to have all of you here. That's a lot of money we're talking about, first of all, in terms of the from the White House to the Great White Way and Broadway and, of course, Radio City Music Hall. I want to start with you here, Will, on this, because it is significant to have uh, Biden, Obama, and Clinton in this room. It is. It is. It's, it is party unity. And look, the protesters outside, that's also Democratic Party unity. That's our big tent. That's what happens, you know. And if you saw uh, President Biden in North Carolina the other day when he got interrupted, he said, they have a point. There's too much destruction going on there. He's moved. The administration has moved. The protests have worked. That's what happens in the Democratic Party. Um, but I think it's, it's such a big deal when you have a contrast when the, the President Trump's vice president refuses to endorse him. And here, and, in, and let's, let's go for even further, Mitt Romney, the last standard bearer for the Republican Party, refuses to endorse him. Uh, Mitch McConnell had to have his arm twisted. So you, here you have two presidents saying, look, not only do we support the president, we support his agenda, look at our economy, we're going to raise him some money, and the stakes are high. Democracy is on the line. And I think you have democratic unity, and we're going to need that going into November. Do you see this as democratic unity when you have the protesters outside? No, and look, I think you're going to see this type of division continue to happen well into the Chicago uh, Democratic National Convention. I mean, this is going to look, uh, you know, make a lot of Democratic conventions look like uh, kids play compared to what we're seeing. This is a consistent problem for Joe Biden. You see it in poll after poll after poll. It's the reason why he had to have Barack Obama and Bill Clinton with him on stage tonight. You look at some of the polling in states like Michigan, where his numbers with not just Arab voters are down right now, but also voters of color, particularly in the Detroit metro area and Wayne County. You look at a number of other areas uh, in key swing states uh, that we saw even in some of the primary turnout elections, whether it was uh, Hennepin County and uh, Minnesota.
Minnesota, or whether some of the counties uh, in Texas in the results of Super Tuesday elections, Joe Biden is underperforming with key elements of his base right now. You saw that by the star power he had to bring out tonight inside the room, just as much as you saw from the protest that you saw outside that room. Two different positions here, Lane, thinking about what this represents. Either it's a good thing or it's a uh, sort of a scarlet letter to have them there. What do the polls suggest in terms of how voters might view the presence of people like Clinton and Obama? Well, I think it's really interesting because on the one hand, it does show party unity. that They're all standing behind each other. On the other hand, I don't think it's going to help Joe Biden have these visuals because the star of the show isn't going to be Joe Biden. When you know what everybody's going to be looking at, they look at Bill Clinton, they look at Barack Obama. and. Joe Biden doesn't have the same kind of thing. So I think in some ways that is going to hurt him. Now, the other thing I do want to say about, I don't agree with you that, that it's party unity to have the protesters outside. I think this is a big issue. And I think it's why when you start looking at polling when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. comes into the mix, it actually hurt, hurts Joe Biden. That's because he is, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has now gone all in. He's anti-war. He's picked an anti-war candidate to, to, to run with. And that's now going to be his big platform. And I think that's going to be enough to really spoil the election should Robert F. Kennedy Jr. get in. But your point about the unity is that there is a political safe space where the person in charge could be persuaded as well. Absolutely. Like, you can actually, the process can work. It's not a, we don't have dictators, right? Like, the President Trump wants to be a dictator just for one day, he says. No, we have a democratic process. And, oh, by the way, the economy is great. Crime is down. Uh, inflation's going down. The two former presidents, uh, more jobs created than any other president. Um, so this is... Uh, that is what the Democratic Party is. It's not pretty. Democracy is not pretty. But it's listening to folks. It's changing your position. It's compromise. That's what Joe Biden has done his whole career. And you remember, he was Vice President Biden first. I was in that White House. And President Obama needed him in 2012 when he was running against uh, Mitt Romney to come and help him. And he needed him in 2008 to help validate him because he was the young freshman senator. So this is what you do. And, and we needed President Clinton to be the explainer in chief. I mean, when so all of these things uh, for President Biden. So that's what you do. And you're seeing unity. Meanwhile, most of Trump's cabinet wants want nothing to do with him as former vice president. So I just think it's really stark. He's playing golf uh, and going to court. Meanwhile, President Biden's going around the country and touting his agenda. That's those are two really stark contrasts. And Jeff, here we are Easter, just a few days away. You were someone who speaks openly about your Christian faith. So I wonder what you think about this. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. What do you think? I mean, how do you feel about Trump selling Bibles? Well, I do hope he has a bunch of them at his house. I hope he reads it a lot. I hope everybody does. Uh, it's certainly a great guiding light for me and my family. But at the end of the day, I don't think folks should be selling Bibles for fifty nine ninety nine when they're running for president. Uh, it's it's uh, you know this is this is Donald Trump's game. Uh, he has confused the evangelical community to, to somehow conflate Christianity with conservatism, and they're not. Uh, there's going to be just as many Democrats in heaven as there are Republicans. Uh, I actually just wrote an op-ed in the AJC that ran uh, a few hours actually before Donald Trump came on and tried to sell those Bibles for $59.99 for the great price of $59.99. Uh, and it really talked about this, this, this divide that's happened, this, this chaos and confusion that Donald Trump's created. Uh, there was a story that I told in the op-ed about Dewey McLean, my seatmate, when I was a state representative, where these you know politicians were were using the name of God to either vote for or against a bill. And I looked over at Dewey and said, you know what, I don't think Jesus really cares much about this bill. Uh, and it was a little lighthearted moment, but it's true. Uh, politicians have been trying to hijack the faith for way too long. You can get a Bible for less than 59.99 too, to be clear there.